Welcome to NCC Unplugged, the podcast from Norman Christian Church, where conversations, community, and culture converge. Welcome back to another episode of NCC Unplugged. We are excited that you joined us for another episode, and we're going back a little bit as I'm here interviewing Garrett Crawford, our Minister of Small Groups and Outreach. Hello. Hi, Garrett. Thanks for joining us. Garrett sounds so excited <laughs> to be here. That's just my normal I think he's worried. Greeting. He's not Hello. sure what we're going to ask. A little worried about on. our questions here yes. a little bit. I don't, I'm not good at... I, I gave yeah. him the challenge ahead of time to uh, do this interview without using any Greek or Latin. <laughs> what so about Hebrew? You Hebrew? didn't say Hebrew? No, uh. no, no. Just use use Matt Mastriani uh, vocabulary yeah. that I know and understand. So. I'd rather talk about theology and like depth... Well, than myself. Well, today we're talking uh, about you. Yep, so, it's all about you, man. <laughs> if you remember a few episodes ago, we uh, I interviewed Jonathan Slatt. Jonathan Slatt interviewed me. Just yep. give a little bit of background of who you're listening to on this podcast. So we thought we would do that with Garrett Crawford. Garrett Crawford is our newest member on staff. Mm. Um, and you've already been here for over a year now. Has it been that long? Yeah. Started in January, okay. January 15th. Um, yeah. Of last year, not this year. Yeah, mm-hmm. and one of the really exciting things when we were hiring Garrett, um, we had never had a position like that before. We n- we didn't have a full time staff position for small groups or for outreach mm-hmm. uh, before that. Joshua, as associate minister, was doing that as part of the other duties of an associate minister. And as we continued to grow as a church, and we were really looking uh, towards what God was having us do in this community, we knew outreach needed to play a bigger part. Our small groups were booming. We needed a little bit more or- focused organization with that, as Joshua uh, had done so good getting them organized and off the ground in many ways. And so we we're really excited when we announced that position. And um, well, now we found Garrett. So he's been doing it for about a year. But Garrett, uh, you tell us a little bit of, of who you are, your history, where did you grow up, your family of origin, all that stuff. So <clears throat> I grew up all 18 years of my life in West Virginia, um, just out of si- outside of Winchester, Virginia. So eastern panhandle of West Virginia, about an hour and a half from Morgantown, which would be more familiar with people mm-hmm. around here, mm-hmm. um, which in college I would always jokingly say I'm from the armpit of America. <laughs> um, but it's I, I loved growing up where I did. Um smaller community everyone kind of knows everyone to a certain degree one high school so Mm. um it was the largest square mile county in west virginia but we only had one high school kind of in the center of that county so there are some people that would drive an hour to get to school every morning so um but still a pretty big graduating class so there was like 300 some in my graduating class which is similar size school to norwin um Played did, sports here, growing up. Here's a trivia: As you're talking about West Virginia, did yeah. you know that the toothbrush was invented in West Virginia? I did not. Yeah, the reason you know there's toothbrush, so many jokes there. Well, the <laughs> toothbrush was invented in West Virginia. If it wasn't, it would have been called a teeth brush. But <laughs> West Virginia only has one. So. Oh boy! Um, Anybody yeah. listening in West Virginia uh, right now, we apologize. <laughs> That's a good one. It was good. I've not heard it, that it one was before. funny. I never good. heard that. I don't. Yeah. I don't know if it really was invented. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were being um, serious. No, I think it was. I'll look it up while you keep talking. But so <laughs> you're getting into sports. your playing sports in high school. Yeah. Well, um, speaking of things from West Virginia, um, Alabama's coach is from West Virginia, okay. uh, or ex coach now because he just retired. Um, Saban. Saban. Nick's, Chris. Uh, Chris. Nick Saban. Nick. Nick. No, is it Nick Saban? I don't. That's bad. I think I don't so. Think I yeah. can't remember his first name. Coach Saban. Yeah, Coach. From yeah, let's West go, Virginia. Coach. Um, so, but I played a lot of sports in high school, middle school, um, baseball, cross country, basketball, four years. Um, and that was kind of my identity was just around sports. Um, I came to faith very early on in my life. But as I grew in sports and my my focus was going to college to play sports. And so originally I wanted to go, uh, my plan was either to become a physical therapist Hmm. and play sports, um, probably baseball. There's a couple of schools that were recruiting me for baseball. Um, or 
if that didn't work out, I was going to go into the Air Force and be a fighter pilot. I wanted to fly F-18s. Wow. That was my, okay. Those were like the two big things that I wanted to yeah. do. Um, all while that, like, those were my plans. At the same time, in my heart, I knew that, like, I was called to ministry. Mm-hmm. Like, probably that connected with me around seventh grade. That I felt that call. And so, and that was a life lesson for me because the more I pursued sports and other things as like my long-term dream and occupation, the more I c- uncomfortable I felt with pursuing hmm. those things Okay, because it pulled me away from where I felt I was called with ministry. Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. When people say like called to ministry or just mm-hmm. like called or like, was, yeah. was it just the feeling of it was pulling you away and that's what that yeah, was? Yeah. I or? think it's different for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, there were specific times in my life where I can visibly remember. So we had a wood shed, um, and it was my brother and I's job to bring wood in from the woodshed during the winter because we had a, a fire, um, a wood stove that heated the house. And it was like we had to take this cart of wood like 100 yards. It was such a pain. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just visibly remember during those me getting wood in that was always my daydreaming time of what I'm going to be when I grow up Mm -hmm. I just I remember thinking about you know my dream of being a baseball player and just having this voice inside my head saying I I want you in ministry Hmm. okay um and then that's when I started bargaining well God if if I become a famous baseball player I can use money to like Mm. help you and and like you know, I, right, I, if I go right. into the military, I can do this. And, and so it's like all of these things that I use as bargaining chips away from it. Mm-hmm. I think that call is different for everyone. I had a much more audible call as well. Um, my going into my senior year of high school at a CIY conference, actually on um, Johnson's campus, it, I just rem- it was pouring down the rain and I went outside after like they call it cry night or whatever. Um, it was kind of like a big emotional night at CIY. And I remember going outside under this tree that's on Johnson's campus still and just sitting under there and just, you know, mm-hmm. talking with God and committing to ministry at that point and having that kind of audible call. Um, and then going into my senior year, <clears throat> I was getting recruited by a lot of different schools for baseball. And so I was trying to navigate, okay, how do I go to these schools to play and then still go into ministry. Mm-hmm. And then I threw my arm out. Um, mm. So before I even got to throw a single game my senior year of high school, I got overexcited for the season. I had taken, typically as a pitcher, you take about three months off um, to let your arm rehab because mm-hmm. I'd play year round. And so from November until February, I wouldn't throw. And then you want to get back into it gradually. Well, I went back full tilt mm-hmm. and just mm-hmm. like, was so excited I went through a bullpen, a huge long bullpen as hard as I could and just messed up my shoulder really bad and still it's still pretty messed up. Um so I didn't pitch my senior year and it's kind of like that perfect opportunity for me to say, Why is this what I'm pursuing? Mm-hmm. And so rather than thinking of what's the best school for me to go play baseball at and try to do ministry on the side, <clears throat> I went to my senior minister at the time and said, What's the best school for ministry? Like, I don't just throw, because he was giving me schools that could do both. And I just said, throw it out of the equation. Where should I go? Um, and he said, Johnson. And so that was in the summer that he said that, that, that we had that conversation. So I applied and left about a month later. Never even went and visited the school or anything. Uh-huh. Just went. Wow. Um, had my classes and everything set up. And Parents were supporting you and all yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of like a whirlwind um, at that point. Um, so... <clears throat> went to Johnson and, and that was very formative. Um, I highly, um, anyone going into ministry, anyone wanting to use a ministry mindset, cause Johnson has a lot of different programs now, but anyone who wants to do a career where they also want to be a disciple maker, want to be, um, using whatever they're doing to spread the gospel. Johnson is just an excellent community. It's an excellent education system. So Johnson so, University, for those that don't know, is mm, down in Tennessee. Knoxville, yeah. Knoxville, Tennessee. Now get to the 
the best part of your story, which is your <laughs> internship that you took at Johnson <laughs> University. <clears throat> yeah. I was um, I was gonna say was that him meeting his wife there? Oh no, 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 no. That's, the that's, internship. That's, the, the internship. <laughs> it was me meeting Jeff. That's what yes. he said. Yes. I knew it was coming. <laughs> um, Sorry, Isabella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um I actually didn't even know Isabella at that point. Isabella and I met two months, we'll three get months to that. Talk about before Jeff. graduating. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, junior year, <clears throat> I was trying to figure out my internship because you're required to do an internship to graduate um, and just went on Johnson's web page or whatever they have their little listings mm-hmm. for and... Um, there's two options that I had I had applied to both of them. One was in New Jersey. Ugh. And they offered the Sorry. position. To, I don't I've, think I've, I've already to everybody in West Virginia has turned yeah. it off. Everybody in New Jersey is now two states it off. down. <laughs> Forty eight to go. I don't think I ever told you that though, but like they offered me the position. Oh no, I didn't know. And part of it was they were saying, We want you to take this position and maybe turn it into getting a full time position there. Mm. Um and that was actually a preaching internship. So mm. my major was preaching and church leadership, not preaching and youth ministry. Okay. Um, and that would have been a preaching internship, but there was just something that I just knew that wasn't the spot. Um, and then shortly after they offered that internship, I got in touch with Jeff and had an interview with him. And he said, Who, well, it's at between, the time was the was youth the, minister. Yeah, he was right? the youth yeah. minister. And he says, between you and one other guy, I don't know who the other guy was. but I don't either. But no. I won. So. <laughs> and then, yeah. Uh, yeah, the rest of history no, came Garrett, here as an we intern. Won. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, and just loved my internship. Um, it, was, it was a great experience. And um, Jeff is well known at, in Kentucky now because for my first, so I, in Kentucky, my first church, um, full-time ministry was Freedom Christian Church. And that's, they became my family. Like they were, mm. I was very close with everyone there. And for my first two years of ministry there, I was there for almost six years. First two years was in youth ministry. And everything I did as a youth minister, Jeff got credit. <laughs> like, where did you get this idea? Well, yeah. Jeff. <laughs> and so people got to the point where they said, did you get this from Jeff? <laughs> so people know you. <laughs> Good job, Kentucky. Yeah. Good job. So, so far, West Virginia, New Jersey, thumbs down, but Kentucky. Kentucky. Well, you know? now, hey, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so eventually, so you did your internship. That was a summer long internship you did. Mm-hmm. Events with us. Camp, going into junior year. I actually met year. you. Whenever oh, you were in turn here. Yeah, I was doing some I we didn't attend here yet, but I was doing some signs inside the building and you were here. So don't remember yeah. that. Yep. That's interesting. Yeah. Usually yeah. I remember those yeah. things. Yeah. Huh. I'm a forgettable well, person. I, I don't guess. know. That's, uh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. No one I, in Kentucky knows your name, man. No, no, no you're sorry. Not. I a dog sat for Allison and Jim okay. at their old house oh, on yes, a road. Well, I guess they're yeah. still on a road, yeah. road but yeah. 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 So we should fun. probably give out their address on the podcast. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Jim and Allison Murray live at. Um, so um, you went, then you went back to school. Yeah, I went back. Now senior year. we can get to Isabella. Yeah. So okay. that was. Um, uh, so at Johnson, if you don't meet your wife on the first try, <laughs> <laughs> you're considered to be like, like you, you're given like a, uh, I don't know. Like a a dot or something that people like stay away from him. He didn't. <laughs> it didn't work out for him the first. They so made I it had, through freshman year yeah, without, without, dating yeah. without getting married. I had like three or four girlfriends at Johnson because my view is I know within a month that I'm not going to marry you. I'm not going to keep this relationship going. Right. And so I got this reputation of <laughs> he dates people and doesn't marry them. <laughs> and then uh, me and Isabella met. Um, I had gone like six months um, and just kind of, I remember I went, I, I f- February um, 4th, I went and did my interview at Freedom. They hired me on February 5th, which is my birthday. Hmm. Um, and then I went and started doing weekend whenever I didn't have baseball. I'd, I'd go um, and do stuff there at Freedom. And like in around April, I remember talking to some people and saying, yeah, I don't know if I'll ever get married. I might just end up like Paul. <laughs> Literally two weeks later, me and Isabella met. Yeah. And God and had a different dating. plan. Yeah. Yeah. And 
we have an interesting history of our dating. Some 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 weird stories about like dates gone wrong. Like my second date, I took her to the comic book store. Like I'm a huge fan of comics. And I I used to spend way too much money a month on comics. And so I took her to my comic book store where I had like a it's called a uh, <clears throat> it's called a pull, meaning it's like they when comics come in, they pull them and put them in your folder, and so you get access to them all the time. So I had like a, a pretty big <laughs> pull, <clears throat> and I took her to go collect my pull for that <laughs> that week. <laughs> my truck broke down on the way back, so I take her to the comic book store. Not a great second date. Yeah. My truck breaks down on the way back, and so we're sitting in the middle of Chapman Highway. The tow truck comes, picks us up. We sit in my truck on on the tow truck so we don't get out of my truck and get into the tow truck we just sit on the back of the tow truck <laughs> reading comic books going down the road to the tow to the that's shop. hysterical so that was our second date yeah yeah on our <laughs> third date i called her elizabeth so i didn't I, even call I remember her right that name. story yeah so a lot of things going against us mm-hmm. plus we were graduating like a month after we met mm-hmm. and she was moving to virginia beach and i was moving to kentucky and she's a lot not of stacked against us. She's not from here. No, so mm-hmm. she's from Brazil, right. um, and uh, she w- had like a work visa um, when we finished. Well, actually, technically, she had a student visa that lasts a year past graduation. Oh, okay, um, for her because she graduated in three years because she's just an, a go getter, um, and uh, so that expired within a year of her graduating but we got married before that expired oh, okay so we only technically dated because i just it was one of those things like you know mm-hmm. within a month that you're not going to marry this person but right. you also know within a month like this is someone i want to spend the rest of my life with. Right. um so we got engaged <clears throat> within seven months of dating and got married within a year of mm-hmm. dating um and the rest is history. She has one point. of the most fascinating accents I've ever heard. Yeah, it's not Brazilian. No. It's, well, I was gonna say it's like, like a it, Brazilian Southern. Yes. Uh, yeah. It, it it moves between the two. Yeah. Yeah. So she learned English from watching cartoons. Okay. In in Brazil, like and she reading did, comics. And well, now, <laughs> I wish. Yeah. yeah. But she she watched a lot of SpongeBob and watched a lot of stuff, and she would watch. She started watching them, um, with English subtitles but they were in Portuguese, um, mm. which is the Brazilian language. And then she would watch them in English with Portuguese subtitles. Okay. And that's how she learned English. Mm. Huh. But she was shy and never really talked much. She's not a shy person at all. She's very extroverted. But when she got here, she was afraid to speak English. And so then when she started speaking English, she very quickly picked up the Southern accent gotcha. in, in Just, Knoxville gotcha. and in yeah. Kentucky. There's a lot of Southern accents. So, so eventually... Cool. Uh, as a church, we knew we were looking for this position. I ended up reaching out to you going, hey, I know uh, there had been, we had talked yeah, throughout the years. You had reached out to me when the youth minister position. That's right. I was going to say, I, I remember was, your name yeah, being brought up. I was, I had just, you reached out to me about a year after I started my being the senior minister at Freedom. Okay. And um, I just, no offense, I didn't want to go back into youth ministry. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I understand that. I really love getting deep, um, and, and you know, I just I don't relate very well to young people. Not that mm-hmm. like like I enjoy the same things, but I'm much more like an older soul, I guess. Mm-hmm. So I, I s- senior ministry and being like with people older than me is was more of my wheelhouse than mm-hmm. than than um, yeah youth ministry was yeah, and, and so then. I- you reached out a, another couple years later yes. yep. with this position. Yep. and So tell us some of your thought process in that you weren't necessarily looking to leave your no. church in Kentucky. You, you, you'd you said earlier that very much became your family. So when thinking about leaving a church and God's call and moving even from senior ministry to now a different role, yeah. small groups, outreach. What was that decision process like? What are some things that went through your head? Well, one of the questions in my interview was, <clears throat> um, on paper, it looks like you're um, uh, not downgrading. What is what is it? like? You, 
you um, get a promotion. You're get, it's like a demotion. demotion. Okay. Um, I don't see it as that way. I, I see it as I'm f- stepping into where I feel called. Mm-hmm. And it was very difficult because on one level, Isabel and I felt very confident that our time at Freedom, as much as we loved and still love. I mean, they're still our family. We still connect with a lot of them. Um, that church, we just felt like it was time for us to go to for someone else to step in, maybe for whatever reason. Or um, there was no animosity. There was no hardship or like church split taking place or anything like that. It's just we felt as if it was time for us to step away. And shortly after we started that process. Um, we, Grayson was born, so we were already pregnant with him whenever you had reached out, and then Grayson was born as the process was continuing, Mm -hmm. and it kind of solidified, because our family is now about two and a half hours away compared to nine hours, and that opportunity just really made a lot of sense logistically, but we also just felt that it was a step for us wherever God was directing. Mm -hmm. Um, And so uh, to look at it as a demotion, I think is to look at it from kind of a, um, would have been to have looked at it from the worldly standards of, of an occupation. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think of ministry fully as an occupation. It's something that I do to glorify God and, you know, it covers, it also allows us to, you know, survive. <laughs> yeah, pay the bills. Um, but we we just both felt strongly. And when we first moved here, we started the small group, the young couple small group that we are in now. And we did a study on experiencing God. Mm-hmm. And I had read that book um, by uh, Henry Blackaby years ago. Um, and then I was reading it through kind of a new lens of, leaving behind this church that on paper just made sense for us to stay there forever. Why would we leave? And then I'm reading this experience in God, and and one of the things that that he points out is, well, God doesn't, to, to experience God and to follow God, a lot of times it doesn't make sense on paper why we're doing what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just he leads us somewhere and we just go, and eventually we'll see why it takes, why mm-hmm. why he led us there. And I think that's very much reminiscent of, of what took place there. You know, we could see some reasons why. I mean, it brings us closer to family and, and you know, things like that. But logically, we were leaving a healthy church. I loved what I was doing. I loved the church. But it, I knew going back to the struggle I had um, in high school of, like, pursuing the call of ministry. And I, I don't... I didn't want to remain uncomfortable terms with God Mm. where I felt like he was leading me one way, but I wanted to do another thing. And that's just not a a comfortable place to be in. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't want to go into that for the rest of, you know, to be in that position Mm. doing ministry. Yeah. So even though we knew you and reached out to you and said, Hey, you want to come apply for this position? It wasn't like, uh, I just brought you along and you're hired. You still went through, uh, we set up a team, a search team. You sent in your resume. You went through interviews yeah. to apply. You and Isabel came up. The moment I think, because I, I thought you'd be a great fit, um, and I think the search, I wasn't even on the search team. I just kind of put your name to them and said, hey, this is the, the history he has with us. The moment I was like, oh, I think they're going to come up here is when Isabel has said how much she loves Big Macs yeah. and McDonald's. <laughs> And that we have the Big Mac Museum. Yeah. Yes. And I was like, oh, That's we got them. It. We got yeah. them. She, um, Brazil, McDonald's is a lot more expensive. And so she didn't get it a lot growing up. Yeah. And so she loves, loves McDonald's. And yeah. So tell us in a few minutes, since you've been here now for a year, um, do you have you continued to feel from God, yes, this is where God has led me? Has he confirmed that call? And then what have been some of those highlights over the last year for you? Yeah, I I think we are definitely, we were definitely called to be here. Um, 
and as far as like a timetable goes, like I don't, I don't put time tables on ministry because you never know just from, you know, freedom's perspective, you know, I, I would have assumed I would just stay there forever. Mm -hmm. Um, and then all of a sudden something gets put into your lap and you just feel like, and (coughs) from that background, there was other churches that had reached out and you just kind of, kind of like knowing when you're dating someone real quickly, it's not, you know, Mm -hmm. that's not the marriage. Um, it was the same way. Like I just knew, like I'd never pursued any of them, but Norwin was the one where like the first time you reached out, I knew that wasn't the one. Mm-hmm. And the second time it was kind of this almost like a, a breath where I don't know. So let mm-hmm. me pers- look into it a little mm-hmm. bit more. And the more I looked into it. Um, and so all that to say time table wise, in my view for ministry, at least you never know, but I feel confidently you know, this is where we yeah. were called to be. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of things that have been exciting. Uh, the young couples group that we've been a part of, um, seeing how that's taken off has been cool. And I was going to say, that's a yeah. amazing group that you have. Yeah, it's, we really love it. And, you know, that feels... <clears throat> I talk a lot about in small groups. I think small groups is essential to modern church because it's how we emphasize community. Mm-hmm. It's how we live out what the early church looked like as far as community and study and caring for one another. And I don't just say that I, I get to be experienced that, which is, which is really fun. And, um, kind of driving that emphasis has been really cool with, within small groups. And it's really amazing to see just how devoted, um, you know, statistically our church is with small groups. Mm -hmm. Um, Very much so. Yeah. The Christian state, Christianity, your Christian standard came out with their church report Mm -hmm. this past month. And um, the average percentage of attendance that participates in small groups is is like under right around 40%. Okay. And ours is over 80%. Yeah. Which is just like we're double the average, which is so cool. That's why. To see like the commitment to community that we have here. Mm. Um, And And we're a bigger church too. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. yeah. It's it's really cool. Yeah. and then the uh, <clears throat> the drive for outreach has been cool, and to um, which and, and honestly, that's been a little bit more daunting to me. Like, I'm very much more study and growth minded as far as you know academics go. I'm doing like a like a my I did a researching master's, and I'm doing my doctorate, and so the study aspect and the small group aspect and teaching like that's natural for me. Mm. Um, the outreach was a little bit of a stretch. I love serving and I love, you know, I think we're called to do that, to go into the community and serve, sure. but organizing the outreach, um, that's been a little bit, that stretched me some. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but I'm also encouraged by being able to be stretched and see a side of ministry that um, I had seen a little bit of at Freedom, but then just um, had to expand um, that's been fun, um, but a little bit more nerve wracking. I think a little bit sure. more yeah. um, behind the scenes work than than I'm used to. So that's um, it's been cool, but it's also probably been the more difficult aspect mm-hmm. of everything. Cool. Well, thanks a lot for sharing your journey and uh, how you came to join us and some of the things that God was working in your heart during that time. Another thing that we want to talk about today, when you're watching this is our new search. I mean, we just yeah. talked about Garrett being our newest staff member, but we're we're currently in a search for a worship minister. And just like Garrett's position was brand new, this full-time worship pastor position or minister position is, is a new one for us too mm-hmm. as a church. And so that's really exciting. Uh, currently, we have uh, a couple that's been leading our worship for, I think they said, close to 30 years, if yeah. not over yeah. 30 years, mm-hmm. doing a phenomenal job with it. But as we continue to grow as a church, we know um, there's a cap to what we can ask volunteers to do. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's already hard to ask them to do anything beyond what they're already doing because they do so much when it comes to leading worship. All through volunteer. Like, it's not. Yeah, yeah, all is volunteer. They haven't been paid in in that 30 years. And And they both already have full time jobs that are big jobs. Yep. And so um, 
we're excited about this. We're excited to invite a new staff member to join us in this worship minister position. Um, we're not we're not saying where we are currently is bad. In fact, what we said on stage when we announced this position is that a lot of the things that we're currently doing, we still want to do. We're not looking mm-hmm. for a huge change in, in the way we do worship or in our Sunday morning service. A lot of the things are going to stay safe, same, the same. But some aspects outside of Sunday morning um, that we just don't have want anybody to do now. Mm-hmm. Um, and so some of that just looks like coming to staff meetings. We do staff meetings about every other week. Uh, we talk about the direction of the church. We talk about 90-day goals. We talk about what's in front of us, what we need help with, check in with one another. Um, we have a morning prayer prayer time every single weekday at 10 a.m. Um, all this Part staff- of the staff meetings is going through your sermon series too and connecting yeah. with yeah, you know, absolutely. getting everything streamlined. Yeah, and so that it's going to be just a lot of collaboration, I guess, is mm-hmm. what I'm getting at with with the new staff uh, position, which can't happen with volunteers. Right. Um, I would <laughs> I would never ask a volunteer to sit through our staff meeting. Not that they're <laughs> that boring. <laughs> they're very long. But they are long, very. and we talk about everything in the church. You know, even things that don't pertain to our area of influence are important for us to know as, as staff members, and so. Logistics of parking and yeah, yeah. How, communion, different things like that. So, um, that's going to be a big part of the job, and that's something that um, just raises the level of of that position. Mm-hmm. You know, from from going to volunteer to staff, and it's not not anything the vol- volunteer can't do or can't handle, but it just raises the level of expectation and excellence when we're able to integrate all these things with collaboration in a full time sense. Mm. Um, and we don't want to burn our volunteers out either. Uh, we don't want to ask a volunteer to do so much that someday they just come to us and say, I, I, I can't handle it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm done. Right. Then, then we need to fill that gap or we need to find other people. And so, I mean, there's a lot of people that, um, speak into worship ministry currently because this, well, what we're looking for isn't just someone to lead on stage, uh, we're looking for pe- for a person that also does some of the tech side of things. Mm-hmm. And in our job description, uh, we say coordinate all the details of the service and make sure the musical and technical aspects help support its theme. And so, Matt, as you're part of this conversation, uh, some of that is something you currently do. Yeah. Right? When it yeah. comes to uh, overseeing the people at the soundboard, over people seeing it, the the slides, mm, live stream. Live stream yeah. So you're getting fired? Is that what this yeah, means? That's, yeah, that's it. He's no. out no. it. Finally. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Jeff's plan came to fruition. Now, yeah, that, that part of my job, I, I am, you know, stepping back from, will mm-hmm. be stepping back from whenever we hire whoever God has in store for us. And um, what you were saying, Jeff, about... Uh, only being able to expect so much from a volunteer and not wanting to overburden them uh, with with that. Um, as sure as many of you know, I own a business as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, I own a business. I do this quote unquote part time. My wife says I have two full time jobs just because <laughs> of how much time it takes up. So this is this is definitely something that I am looking forward to mm-hmm. to being able to take a step back um, at least on. The tech side of things here at the church, um, a lot of work goes into what you see on a Sunday morning uh, that pretty much most of my Saturday is is taken up mm-hmm. with doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting back the time. I said, I, I, I look forward to being able to wake up on a Saturday morning, going down, getting a cup of coffee and just sitting on the couch and yeah. watching TV. Yeah. Um, because again, with my full time job, you know, God's God's been blessing us like crazy lately. And mm-hmm. it's just, yeah, burning, burning the candle at both yeah. ends. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so the tech side of things I'll be stepping back from still going to be on staff though. The the yeah. new title is, you know, communication and social media director or something to that extent. Okay. So yeah, that's uh, looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, I am. And, um, and both Matt and Ken and Kelly who do the lead the worship team, are part of the search committee mm-hmm. for yep. this person that we're looking to bring on. And so we're excited for that because you guys get to speak into those areas of expertise as we're looking for someone to come on board with us and, hey, this is this is how it looks for me. This is maybe what they need. This is what our church 
currently needs? You know, do their skills meet what we need? Mm-hmm. And so for you guys to speak into that as we search, you know, kind of what our search process looks like um, as a church historically, what we've done and what we're doing with this is we create a team with staff and uh, volunteers that put out the job description. They um, look at resumes that come in. We came up with a questionnaire kind of as a follow-up to ask more questions about this person. We're going to set up Zoom interviews, go through all of that. And then our our church elders make the final decision. Mm -hmm. And so as the search team comes to their conclusion, it says, okay, this person is who we think we should bring on. They hand that over to the elders. And the elders at that point have already been involved in the process, probably part of the interview um, and so they're the ones that make the offer to that person, say, hey, would you come on staff with us um, and what we're doing? And so, you know, s- some people, some of the questions that we've had with different people in the church as we announced this, I think we announced it to our congregation maybe a month ago at this point, um, is they said, well, what what else is this person going to do or what are they going to do that our current volunteers don't, mm-hmm. don't do? And, and some of it is we don't know mm-hmm. because right. this is a new position. Um you know, like sometimes I have an idea for a sermon or a video that would go along with the the sermon on a Friday. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, Matt's already doing 50 things when he should really only be doing 30 things. <laughs> I'm not going to ask, ask him to do a 51st thing on a Friday, uh, but maybe a staff member I would, you know, mm-hmm. or we could make a video throughout the week that really illustrates the sermon. That's part of the job description is to come up with videos and, you know, what if... What if they're able to make uh, a, a celebration video for an event we have? And we've done those in the past, but we can't do it with every single event we have. Right. You know, we do a big prom uh, dress event here at the church. What if we're able to make an, a, a video promoting that or to celebrate that after that happens? And just a lot of things that we just haven't been able to even think about. Right. Because we've we've had a capacity, you know, with volunteers in this. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's that's the one thing that I'm really excited about is, you know, I believe God put me in the spot to get us from where we were six or seven years ago to to where we are now, mm-hmm. just um, with the team I have too, working behind the scenes on everything. I'm super proud of what we were able to do during COVID yeah. um, and kind of maintain the community as best as we could mm-hmm. uh, whenever we weren't able to meet and everything. Mm-hmm. Um but like you said, there's there's stuff that hasn't been done that I either don't have the time or bandwidth to to think about, or just mm-hmm. you know it hasn't come to mind yet that I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how we can improve. And again, not like totally altering service or not like no lasers or snow machines. Yeah. Well, yeah. maybe some snow machines, but uh, but just just improving. Yeah. Um, I, I like to use the word the term tightening the screws. Like we we have the the framework. Mm-hmm. Let's just tighten those screws a little bit to improve yeah. and make it better. And uh, yeah, so I, I know I'm I'm super excited about this. Yeah, and if you've been to our church building uh, during the week, you know there's so many things that happen throughout the week. And so bringing on a new staff member, um, you know, a lot of people like worship songs to be played at funerals and mm-hmm. weddings. Yeah, um, yeah. So we're we're expecting them to help in that capacity, even if it's not playing the keyboard or guitar or something for some one of those. It's it's at the soundboard or the mm-hmm. controls hitting different buttons. And so um, that serves our church in capacities outside of worship services on a Sunday morning. And so some of that will be part of the job description. And so, you know, we're right now it's, it's pretty wide open as far mm-hmm. as who we're looking for. Um, if you are interested in our job description, maybe for yourself or for someone you know, it's posted on our website, normchristianchurch.com. It's slash like, jobs. Slash jobs. Yeah, yeah. It's also one of the tabs if you click over is, yeah. uh, jobs at NCC. You can kind of read read through our expectations, our job description, what we're hoping uh, some requirements are for this person that would, would come on board with us. But we're excited about it. We welcome any questions. If you have any questions, you're a member here at NCC or regular attender, um, we'd love to talk to you yeah. about it, You know what we're looking for, um, what this person is going to do. We don't have a timeline. You know, Garrett spoke uh, about his um, understanding of timelines. Like, the moment you put something out there, God's like, yeah, yeah. okay, I'll do something, <laughs> something about Something else that. in mind. <laughs> um, and so we're open to, you know, just taking the time to find the right person. Uh, we, we've we known how uh, difficult that can be here at Norwood Christian Church as, as we've hired people over the years. It can take 
quite a while to find the right fit and the right person. And ultimately, I think that's that's our our greatest concern is is the right fit. You know, certain skills can be learned and taught, um, and so maybe that needs to be taught. But we know, you know, integrity can't be mm-hmm. taught. Somebody's character and how they're a team player, how they're a leader. Uh, there's a lot of those attributes and characteristics that we're looking for from a person far above um, certain instrument that mm-hmm. they play or, right. or mm-hmm. the quality and all that. So um, anything else from you guys as far as what we talked about today? I just think, too, you look at the, talking about the right fit. You look at the cohesiveness of our staff mm-hmm. as it is right now. I think that plays a big part into how our church is also growing, mm-hmm. um, just the camaraderie and the the love that we all have for one another, and I think that shows to the rest of the congregation. And um, so, yeah, we're we're taking our time, like you said, making sure it's the right fit, and uh, we'll see. I'm again, I keep using the word excited, but I'm genuinely excited to see what God has mm-hmm. in store for us to see mm-hmm. where we uh, where we go for here. From I here. think. <clears throat> The fact that we're not tied to any sort of timetable, that we're just open to making mm-hmm. sure it's that right fit, right. you know, that speaks into our mentality behind it. We're mm-hmm. not trying to get bigger, 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 bigger as quick as possible. We want to make sure that um, everything we do falls under the purview of God's sovereignty and direction, mm-hmm. and we're just waiting for his timing and for his um, guidance and provision into that. Yeah. Um, so we're not doing any of this to make ourselves look better mm-hmm. or, you know, on the surface to be the next step into a mega church or something like that. Right. That's right. not yeah. at all the yeah. the goal. Yeah. The goal is to step into God's plan and, and design and into his um, direction. And we feel this is part of that and we'll wait for him to bring it together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We would love for you to join us in prayer as we continue to search for this person, continue to pray for Garrett and his ministry, and just uh, we're excited as he continues to serve with us and uh, the things that he's already brought here to NCC as he uh, does outreach and the different partnerships we have with organizations as he does small groups and the amount of small groups that we have. And we're just excited, excited about his ministry, all he's done. We're excited about this worship ministry position and what that could mean. And so just join us in prayer for that. We'd really appreciate that. And uh, again, we just thank you so much for joining us for NCC Unplugged. Also, Garrett made it through an entire episode without using a Greek Greek Latin Latin term. Well done. Good job. (laughs) Thank you for tuning in to NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed listening to our podcast, we encourage you to share this with your friends and family. NCC Unplugged is available on all major podcast platforms. And if you're ever interested in experiencing Norwin Christian Church firsthand, we invite you to join us for our services every Sunday at 8.45 and 10.30 a.m. We have engaging classes available for all ages, ensuring there's something meaningful for everyone in our church community. For more information about NCC or any other inquiries, visit norwinchristianchurch.com 